Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm very excited about the framework I'm going to show you that, that I use every day to trade names outside of SPY, QQQ, and IWM to capitalize on quick morning moves based on conviction that I established ahead of time. I actually learned these techniques from some incredible professional traders and it will combine several concepts from my previous last videos. So if you see something in there that doesn't make sense to you, please check out my volume price analysis series, uh, my market structure videos, and other trade edicts videos that I've done for more details on some of these concepts. I'll also make videos soon on the various methods I use to find these plays. You don't have to use trade edicts to build conviction on these plays. Uh, you can use any options flow tool really. However, it's just my personal favorite options flow tool, so I'll be using examples from that. Before we get started, if you'd like to get a 10% discount for TradeDX, don't forget to use my referral link in the description. I've been told recently that when the link is used, it doesn't look like the discount will be applied. However, as long as you use the link prior to hitting the sign up page, it will definitely be applied on the back end. You also find some referral links for TradingView and Top Step funded trader programs that will give us both discounts. Lastly, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to help me grow this channel. So with that being said, let's get right into it. I want to cover a play that I took on Meta this past Friday, July 8th, 2022, and explain how I found it, what I liked about it, and how I played it. Uh, just know that this is an out-of-date example, so therefore it's important to assess new tickers using this method going forward. Please don't just copy this exact trade because it's currently out of date, but all the principles I'm going to show you still always apply. I'm not exaggerating at all when I say that these pop up every single day, and it's important to really try to limit the watch list that you build to only the best plays that you find. So the way I found this play actually was at the time I ran this command to find algo flow divergences. Now this is the TradeEdix Discord. I did a whole video about it and I did, uh, I, I'm not sure if I showed examples of this command, I'm pretty sure I did, but just to show you if you type T hyphen algo flow divs, this will show us divergences in algo flow, which basically is a, is a fantastic TradeEdix tool that, bas that shows us if there's divergences from what algo flow is expecting the price to be, versus the way the price is actually moving. So in this case, you can see a couple interesting tickers here that I, I, I wanna look in more, more into, and I might do that live at the end of this video if we have time, but there's just a lot to cover, so I can't guarantee it. And maybe at some point I can do a, a live video on, on finding some plays for the following day. But you can see at the time, what I saw was I saw meta in this list and I saw it had a bearish algo flow divergence. Like for instance, you can see coin is in this list looking bullish, pens. So there's some interesting names and that's something, you, if you're watching this video the, the day I release it, which is July 8th, 2022, then you might actually even want to consider investigating some of these names. So once I pull that up, uh, what what I once I found meta the very first thing that I do and you can also do this in the discord But I need to assess to see if this is actually a valid play So in order to do that I, I went to the options ticker dashboard and I searched meta And I could see that the overall flow was bearish and the amount of net premiums and the algo flow sentiment And actually this is sort of looking similar to the way it did then which is nice now you can see algo flow divergence shows that we're still expecting the price itself to move down. Now we did have a bit of a sell off today and we can see that uh, it's expected to continue to go lower. So that that's one thing I liked about it. Also, look, I was looking at the heat maps to see the strikes that were being targeted and we could see that for this upcoming expiration as, and for, as far as uh, bearishness is concerned, we have a lot of 165 and 170 puts being targeted and you can also look at you can see that it's the same way for the weekly premiums heat map and then one thing that i always love using of course is net flow and you can see here i mean this is just heavy uh bearishness so we're, we're seeing a lot of put buying um and calls are just flat so that's a great sign that this that we can that we can go forward with this play and just to show you quickly, one thing I also like doing is if I go into the Discord, I like running T Netflow Meta and specifying one day cumulative and seven days expiration. And I also like doing that. Uh, oops, sorry. So they actually there was a recent update here, so I need to flip channels. But so if we go T Netflow Meta one seven, that's going to show me today's one day cumulative history for 
expirations that are seven days or less, and we can see that's still bearish with a very nice kick up of bearish bearishness here. So a little spike in put buying at the end of the day, which is also a great sign that this would be a good play. And then uh, sometimes I also like expanding it out a bit, looking at two days cumulative, uh, 14 days, and actually, so again, there's this is related to the recent changes. I apologize for that. So let's do two and 15, and we can see here, yeah, so you can see right where that flip, flip occurred. Uh, and I mean, it was bearish, 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 and then we had some bullishness come in with call buying, and then it just immediately flipped back down as of today. And, has been bearish ever since and it does actually look like that bearishness will continue and then really just going through the rest of the dashboard i mean you have heat maps you could see the open interest being targeted and i'll get into all this stuff in more detail in another video but basically the idea is that i'm trying to build conviction around the play and, and one thing i also like doing is seeing is if, if there's been any notable news uh, which in this case there hasn't been and at the time there hadn't been but uh flow was telling us that the the that spec like big speculative positions we're trying to bring this thing down another great thing i love looking at is this whale positioning timeline which i'm going to do a whole video on but it's just showing us that for these big strikes like the big money is actually pretty uh bearish on it you can you can actually track this in the the discord as well which is very helpful doing this whale watch meta and what i like about the discord is it allows me to quickly build conviction so we could see and this, we sort of saw this when we were looking at the heat maps, but 160, 162, 5, 165, all these have become very bearish. And this is the whale watch. So this is the biggest money, uh, how there's the speculation being done on this name. So uh, it really looks bearish focused. So now that I have the conviction, the next way, next thing I need to do to line up this play to make sure that this is good is to look at the chart. Now, this is July 8th. At the time, we only had data for july 7th right so we didn't have july 8th and i'll get into what that looks like now the first thing i always do is i like to start at the daily and if you've watched my volume price analysis series you know i'm a big fan of volume profile the volume profile i have over here is called visible range volume profile so it shows me all of the volume for all of the candles shown on here the the price at, at points where the most volume comes in and if we actually zoom in a little bit here, keep an, keep an eye on this big volume gap here. And this was happening across the board for so many tickers last Friday, which is why I was bearish on Friday. It seemed like this rally that we, the, the whole week, we had a rally on a bunch of names, including uh, SPY and QQQ. And they all were coming into this big volume gap, which is one of several reasons why I thought that rally would end. There was also some gamma exposure and some volatility exposure and nuances there as well, but we could see that the move up had been happening. Volume, it was happening on diminishing volume and we were pushing right into this big volume gap. And so now keep in mind, this candle for seven, eight did not exist at the time. And so all I had, cause I, I, I should mention, I always do these plays at the end of the day after market close, I look at basically the flow for the day and what came in at the end of the day and you can use live flow and other things for it which i'll definitely have to dedicate videos to but we can see it was pushing up on diminishing volume right into this volume gap and so right away that's where i marked uh, I, I wanted to mark this on my chart because what i want to see, figure out is what the best entry point is going to be and i need to mention too that since i'm doing this the night after market close they're still we still have to account for pre-market data the following day so what i do at market close has to be updated the following day so when you build your watch list and let's say you find two or three really great plays that you have a lot of conviction around with how they're going to go directionally for the following day then you need to make sure that the the following morning you check to ensure that that your levels your which we're setting here which are going to be our entry points are still valid and so I just also wanted to mark the top of this gap because in the event that I need a stop loss and this might be too far up and we'll get into that shortly when we zoom in but I wanted to mark these levels because of this volume gap knowing that we didn't have these two previous candles and then I also like dropping down to the 30 minute and zooming back to make sure that these still look good and keep in mind we didn't have data for 7.8 and 7.11 so 
I was just working off of this, and this this just sort of validates what we were seeing on the daily chart. We see a big volume gap, uh, and I, because of the bearish sentiment that NetFlow was showing me going in, I did not expect this gap to fill, and that is key for lining up this play. So I, I mark these two levels, and then the last thing I need to do is mark what my first profit target would be. Now. The way I do that, once again, is by using volume profile and price action to see where that makes the most sense. And I'm actually gonna turn on the periodic volume profile, which is set to one day, and then we can actually zoom in a bit more. So now keep in mind, and let me actually say replay here. Keep in mind, up until this point, the only data I had for the play was this. And so this is the entry trigger at the time that we marked uh, for our possible entry. And then we have a potential stop. Now this is very deep and I, I, and I certainly plan to move it. But again, I'm gonna move it the following day once we have the pre-market data in place. Now, if we zoom in here, it seems like if I were to take an entry here the next day at market open, if, if we, this is gonna be my entry trigger and we can actually go ahead and label this as entry trigger. I need to also define a profit target because I don't want to go in blind and let me just center that to make it more visible. I don't want to go in blind and you can color code this as well if you you know if, if it's a put trigger if you want to make it red or something you know feel free to, to change this around as you like or whatever you feel comfortable with and then I would need to, to consider some take profit areas right so if we were to enter here then this would be about a dollar move, which would be a nice uh, take profit. First take profit, so we'll say take profit one, and then we can set another take profit at previous low of day. And also I'm, I'm, I'm referencing these volume gaps here. So like if we get through this, this volume gap and we get here and then we start pushing through, then we could do another take profit here and label that take profit two. And what I'm essentially lining up, if you already can't tell, is based on the conviction that I established, looking at flow data and other, you can use other factors too, right? You can use fundamentals, news, trusted sources, right? right? If you see someone that puts out a watch list on Twitter and you trust this source, then do your own due diligence and apply this, this framework, this method to uh, what you're seeing and, and validate what they're saying. And then don't, you don't have to depend on their entry triggers, right? And this is what I wanna talk about here. So. Uh, you could see here, I'm, I decide to play puts. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm looking for price to break through this level, and I'll show it as we let this, this pre-market data come out a bit. But So let's say we, we set our levels and we go to bed, right? And knowing that we're gonna be adjusting these in the morning, and what we could see is in the pre-market, we had some big action here, right? We had a gap down, which actually, is extra confirmation of the fact that there is bearish sentiment, right? I like seeing this gap down. But the thing I wanna point out is I'm not looking to take this play the following day as a level break, right? I've, I've mentioned before, I don't like, and sorry about that, let me just uh, set this back here. So right around 9.15 in the morning is when I like to look at these plays to make sure that my entries and everything are still still valid. So now we're looking at the five minute and as many of you know, I, I really prefer the three minute. So let me drop to that. And I'm, I'm using the volume profile from the next day because I've already looked at the chart and, and done my, my technical assessment. And so at this point, we've had this gap down. Now, I'm not looking to say, okay, I'm gonna chase puts through a level break, right? If I'm, if I'm playing puts, I'm looking for it to pull up into my entry trigger, and it's fine if it goes above it. If, it's to, if it does go above my entry trigger and I'm playing puts, if I'm buying puts, I'm looking for it to come back below that entry trigger. And I'm using things like volume and candle wicks and everything to determine if my level is gonna hold and if it's still valid. I'm not just blindly taking these. And I'll, and I'll show you what I mean by that momentarily. So when I saw this gap down, I said, okay, I need a new entry trigger, right? So we're opening at 170.20. I need something that's, I don't expect it to come all the way back up here. And honestly, if it did, I would be concerned that it was no longer a valid play. So 
what I did is uh, using this big long pre-market candle and I do actually use pre-market price action in order to help determine entry triggers. And then the nice thing about this, if we look carefully here, is we can see we have this big, all this big volume right here, and then we have a gap, and then we have these lows, right? So this actually became an area of support. Now that we're below it, I fully expect this, if we pull up there, I fully expect it to be an area of resistance. And so now I simply need to adjust my take profit. So now this take profit obviously isn't valid anymore because of uh, the fact that we're already below it. Now, if we do enter up here, I could use it. So what I like doing is, okay, if we see this pullback, I'm going to uh, set first take profit here, and then I'm going to set another take profit uh, at the top of this zone. And again, I I'm, I'm scaling out of these plays. So when I initially, when my entry triggers hit, Oh, and then of course we also need to make sure we we adjust our stop loss. So basically what I'm saying here, at what point this play becomes invalid, and I wanna make sure that my take profits, uh, my, fir my first take profit is bigger than the, what I'm risking in terms of price movement, which you can see here that it is. Now, this is actually kind of a, a wider stop loss, and the better entry you get, of course, you don't have to, uh, you, you can have a, a tighter stop, which is nice, but um, so the idea is that when we, when I enter my full position at my entry trigger and we get to take profit one, I'm going to immediately take off about 60% of my position. If we get down to take profit two, I'm going to take off uh, a remaining 30% of that original 60%. So at this point, 90% of my position is off the table and then I'm leaving runners. And at no point when I'm in profit and, and when I reach my first take profit, am I gonna let this thing come back and put me in the negative, right? I'm looking for quick scalps. I'm looking for the addition of Vega being on my side. There have been actually times in the past on a Roblox play, for instance, where it actually did go against me. I misread the candles, took the entry. It actually went against me, but because of the volatility spike, I still made money and I was actually able to get out quick with small profits, which is, amazing when you see vega outweigh delta and gamma that way it's not something you can count on but it is a benefit of doing these morning uh scalps essentially based on the conviction we had built and so again now the game plan is when this thing opens i'm looking for a pull up to somewhere around my entry trigger i'm going to look for uh, uh wicks in candle confirmation alongside volume at time that we are indeed holding my level if we go above it, that's okay. As long as I get, when, when we see it coming down, it does look like it will actually continue. And then I have my preset take profits. And that's the whole framework, right? Is we're building conviction around a play. We're set presetting stop loss entry triggers and our take profits. We're leaving, we're, we're taking off the bulk of the position. And you know what, if we miss a big move, so what? If it runs out without us, we catch it with our runners. But the idea is we want to capture a, a couple points out of the gate and make some quick money. And then once we're done with these plays that we line up, then at that point we can go back to trading SPY, QQQ, and IWM. And so another thing I like to do is uh, you can actually add alerts to these. So I can go in here and because if I have multiple plays, oftentimes um, I don't want to, uh, so I don't want to, sit there and have to watch them too carefully. And so if you add an alert, just make sure that you add it before it gets to your entry trigger. That way you it can draw your attention. And the thing is too, with these entry triggers, we can actually make it more of an entry zone, right? So if we see a response within this, this entry zone, and that way we can account for th these, this, this price action, these, these levels here, Right, it doesn't have to be a strict level. It should be more of a zone, essentially. Then we know that uh, that it's it's time to take our entries as long as uh, volume price analysis confirms that. So let's let this play out, and I'll show you exactly how this played out for me. So I'm gonna hit play, and so right out of the gate, remember I'm, I'm I have bearish conviction. I'm not one to do to to chase through level breaks. I'm not one to say calls over X or puts over X. I have it set based on the research I've done that this play is bearish. I'm looking for puts only. I'm gonna get my money and then just move on. So 
here's what here, this is what ends up happening and so we could see we're pulling up to my entry zone and I start seeing these long wicks and actually uh, what I actually prefer to do for these sorts of plays and it's it's personally it's totally up to you but I do actually like dropping down to the one minute because it helps me it helps me see like how many wicks we're getting it helps gives me extra time because usually you only have a couple minutes like one to two one to three minutes to enter these plays anyway so after I've established everything I start seeing these wicks and I say okay you know what this is good uh, I have I have a predefined stop it's it's respecting this zone that I already identified, and uh, what which is right around these lows from the day before. So I'm going to enter puts, and then as mentioned, I'm going to stick to my plan and take profits as we go. So we'll let this play out more. Get into puts here on these on these wicks, and now we're riding this thing down, and we're seeing if it goes our way. Now when it comes back up, that's perfectly fine, right? It's still not coming to our stop. We're letting this play out a little bit. We have bearish focus and you can actually watch net flow on this ticker uh, to, to make sure that it's not shifting against you and this play actually is giving us a little bit of time to get in if we didn't get in initially off of these wicks which is perfectly fine when we see when we see this happen I want I want to zoom in here when we see it pull up and directly on the entry trigger right that's as good as that's as good as it's ever going to get and we see it sell off and then uh, right right here we get this big bearish candle and that big bearish candle happened on increasing volume not to mention this little pull up happened on diminishing volume right away that's that's like a, this is would have been the most optimal entry that we could have and at this point we have to be in puts and then on top of that it already hit our take profit one so we can start taking off some of that position we can start scaling out and these things happen fast and Essentially, from this entry trigger, 171.24 down to 169.75, we've we've had about one and a half points. So, uh, and that's what I should mention is that when playing these contracts, um, I like doing close to the money or at the money, or excuse me, in the money or at the money. I like ensuring that my deltas are 0.3 to 0.5 and that my gamma is anywhere from 0.05 to 0.1. And the reason being, is because I'm gonna get the biggest bang for my buck. So this, just this move right here, every contract that I had was over, over anywhere, it was basically $75 in profit, roughly. So anywhere from 50 to $75 in profit, just based off of the Delta and Gamma, and that's not even including the volatility spike from the Vega from this, from this big impulsive move that we're getting here. So these contracts go out quick. So this might seem, and that's what we're doing here is we're scalping based on the conviction. We're trying to get in, get our bag of money and get out. So this was such an optimal place for the entry trigger, which you could see again, using prior day levels and then assessing things on the daily plus the net flow. Now, now we wanna just see if it gets to our take profit too. And one thing I should mention is once it gets past your first take profit, it's a good idea to slide your stop losses, meaning that at some point, especially if we're on the one minute, if we close above this, then we'll just get out of our positions. But as you can see, it keeps going. And so now we have the rest of our position just dropping. And this is exactly what we want to see. So we exit into strength, we exit into the momentum, and we do our second take profit. So at this point, now we have our uh, we have our stop slid down to here so no matter what we're going to make money we take off another good chunk of our position to just secure that bag even further and we see if there's a reason to get out and then what we start noticing is that we sort of reach a bottom here and it looks like it's actually going to go down right so the runners can stay on to try to capitalize on more in this position so and that's exactly what we do is we leave the runners on but then all of a sudden we start coming back and at this point, you can still leave your runners on. I'm I'm not one to do so. It does look like it's going to continue rejecting. And so I did want to give it a little bit of time to play out, right? But uh, at the same time, I also don't ever want to get to a point where... Uh, and you have to remember, too, as time goes on, volatility is going to settle down. And so right there, if you did have your runners on at this point, this would have been a reason. This candle would have been a reason to close everything. It's a high volume, incredibly... Uh, bullish candle uh, and we're, we're pushing up even further and so at this point all runners are out and the beauty is we just captured a very nice move right so 
week with, with the optimal entry being at 171.25 and then our exit being around 168.75 let's say I mean so we, we basically capture two dollars and fifty cents roughly and and uh, and those are that's a nice move especially for so early in the day right so it's, it's only it's not even past 1015 at this point and we've already made a significant amount of money on this contract, all with pre-planned entries and exits. And and this was a real play for me. And the, the thing is, th these happen all the time. And this is what I want to point out, is that even though I got out of the position, and that was the move, and actually if we let, I'm just going to speed this up, because if we let this thing, actually I'll just kill the replay here. Um, so... If we actually look what happened that day on Meta, so let's go back to 7, 8. I want to show you that we took out all our profits here, and then Meta proceeded to give back everything. And then it even, I mean, at this point, it's shifting into an uptrend, right? We have a market structure break. We have, we're making higher lows and higher highs, giving back everything that we just captured and then proceeding to actually make uh, a new high of day and just keep moving up. But we don't care because at this point we've made our money. The play worked out exactly the way that we had hoped it would. We secured a nice bag from it and we're done. And then at this point, again, I just like shifting over to SPY and QQQ. And if you have a watch list of basically one to three of these other plays and you're capturing moves like this every single morning, it is astonishing how quickly it grows your account. And it's very potent method. And like I said, we're not chasing level breaks. We're looking, if we're buying puts, we're looking for a pullback to the upside with a rejection. And let me just close this periodic volume profile so it's not in the way. Sorry, could you say that again? Oh, and that's, uh, sorry, that's uh, Siri talking to me here. So um, we can we look for this pull up and then we reject and I don't want to and I don't ever want to just be chasing through levels because that's actually going to cause us to miss money we're not going to capture the block of the move we always want to see a pullback and then a drop and if we're buying calls it's the other way we want to see if we were looking for upside I'd be looking for price to pull down and then run from there now the other thing I need to mention is that it's very important to be picky about your tickers and like for instance I was looking at plays for upstart and snow that same day and I just want to point out notice how gappy these charts are that usually means that there's not a lot of volume especially on the options chain and it's incredibly important to check your options chain to make sure that there is enough volume there because what happens if there isn't you start getting these really wide bid ask spreads and even if the play could could work out just fine uh, by the time you enter it you're already going to be down money now so it's what I what I should also say is what I prefer to do is go in and make sure that the options contract that I'm picking also has a tight bid ask spread and because of that I like to stick to large caps and and, and uh, mega cap stocks because it just keeps that bit bid ask spread super tight uh, I don't really have to worry about any sort of slippage when I execute the contract, especially because as you can tell from this method, we have to make incredibly quick decisions. And so, I mean, at this point, uh, because Meta is a mega cap, you know, there's there's like, there's, the spread is really tight. It's any, gonna be anywhere from two to $4. So I don't have to ever worry about getting a terrible buy-in and then having to hope this price action makes up for that. So that's a, a key factor to be aware of. and again once you made your money just move on and even if even if i got out here and then it proceeded to go down i do not care i already made a good amount of money here i've made my move and guess what because i'm playing spy and qqq uh, i can make money there on the way that they move which is exactly what happened that day and i should also note that when i'm doing these plays for the sake of screen space i didn't have it up but i always have up spy and qqq next to the plays that i'm doing because I, uh, market awareness still applies here, right? So we still, we, we, we have a better chance of succeeding. We have a better chance of this meta play working out. If we're watching QQQ and we see 
QQQ do the same exact same thing. So this was on the same day, and we see QQQ pull up and then start to reject. So if you're not already in your meta play, right? And, and one thing I should note too, if we look at this rejection, is that these small candles right here forming are, are indicators that, okay, th this, and we can already see wicks here showing it was trying to reject, which is nice because it does help confirm our meta play when you see that. And even though I'm not gonna get out because I see like a bullish candle on QQQ, but it's just nice to ensure that it's generally going in the same direction as the play I'm taking. So anyway, that is the framework. And as I mentioned, um, uh, feel for, make sure you check out my other videos to explain how to read price action and volume when you're taking these plays to make sure, because of course, if it didn't play out, and this actually happened the other day with Microsoft where I was bearish on it, and then it came to my entry trigger and then just kept going. And at no point did I see get these WIC confirmations or anything like that showing that I should enter. So if it didn't show me that, I'm not gonna enter, right? I'm gonna scratch the play. I'm not gonna try to force anything. And I just you just need to tell yourself that, and this goes in part with emotions and everything, that there will be more plays the next day. Even if all my plays didn't work out the way I expected, not gonna force entries, I can scratch those plays. Honestly, even when there's big gap downs, like we had we had today, which is July 11th, 2022, you know, I was bearish on meta again, but seeing this big gap down already happened made me concerned that the, the move already, because it was such a big gap down. Now, the thing is this, this would have been another great entry. Unfortunately, I didn't take it today, but just my point is that if you see something out of line the following morning that, that you don't necessarily like, just scratch the play. That we don't need to force anything. Even if you capture just a move like this, even if you capture uh, three or four of these a week, you will do wonders for your account balance. So it's just something to always keep in mind. But anyway, I know this was a long video. I hope you find it helpful. This is truly a framework that professional scalpers use, uh, options derivative specialists. Uh, I've, I've it's uh, I've validated it myself. It's the exact same framework I use before I switch over to playing SPY and QQQ because I personally, I like playing tickers like this before I play SPY and QQQ because I, I like giving SPY and QQQ and IWM time for them to form some structure and see how market net flow goes before I just jump right in. So when I'm waiting for that to happen for that first hour of the day, because we already have conviction built up from the data that we have going into the day, it's the perfect time to execute other plays and se secure some extra money. And trust me, it's a wonderful feeling nailing these plays in the morning and going into the day with um, some significant wins already under your belt. So anyway, let me know if you have any questions and I appreciate all the support and we'll keep cranking out videos. Thanks for watching.